first part is the uh, bikes from the 20s. So we've got a, a Patria Grand Sport 500 with uh, a sidecar. And then a 175 Sport by the same manufacturer fitted with uh, a Villiers engine. And then a Velomotor, or Velomotor, I suppose, because we're in, in Spain. And above that, a 1928 Lutetia. Again, a Villiers engine. Must have been made under license, I assume. They also had engines from DKW in some models, according to the uh, bit behind, I think. And in a Salvador 125 flat tanker from uh, 1924, belt driven. It's got its own engine, own make engine. Again, another model I've never heard of. This place is amazing. I don't know any of these motorcycles. And our dealer 125. Two strokes, single cylinder, despite having two uh, exhausts. And then above that, a Gimson. Well, the engine looks vaguely Zundappy. But there's no indication where it comes from, so presumably their own. And then a Coversa 125 from 1954. Again, another little two stroke. I suspect two strokes are going to feature rather heavily in this because they were easy to build, cheap to make. And then a Avispa. Made in Valencia. And then a mini bike, a Soriano. A Puma from 1947. A 125 again. Villiers motor. Proudly stamped into the case. Very unusual little bike for 47. And underneath that, a BJR. A 125 from 55. His own engine, proudly uh, stamped into the cases. And then finally, some names I recognise. A Montessa. Uh, it doesn't say what year this one is. So I'm not sure. A very unusual engine. I've never seen a Montessa engine like that before. Single cylinder twin port, two stroke. Just says do not touch. I mean, the suspension of things I suspect 1940s, but it doesn't actually say. And in a later Montessa, a Brio from 1956, which is a bit more uh, recognisable. It's still got a twin port single. And very robust Springer rear suspension. And in another famous Spanish maker, Sanglas, side valve, a 350, despite the, uh, despite the size of that engine. Sanglass were sold in the UK for a short time. I really liked them. Always fancied one, but they never sold that many. And then underneath the Ravenna 250 Sport from 1963. Another uh, manufacturer I've never heard of. But this time, twin cylinder, twin carb, pair of uh, a Malcolm uh, monoblocks. And then an Oscar, which I never heard of. The, from, I don't speak Spanish, but from what I can understand of the uh, note underneath, these were never commercialized. So this is the one and only Oscar ever made. A really chunky 250 engine, heavily thinned. It's massive, it's, it's about the size of my uh, A65 engine. But it's a 252 stroke. Chunky. And then a Rayu. Apologies for my pronunciation. A 175 Arank. 
Now, Reu is a name that's resurfaced recently, I seem to remember. But anyway, this one's electric start. It has a Dynastar. So the dynamo works in reverse to start the engine. 1953, so very advanced for the time. And then and next to that, a Sport 125 from 58, all same manufacturer. Horizontal engine. But still a two-stroke. Downdraft carb. Tank and headlamp unit looking very much like uh, the old ESMZs. Leading link forks, so it's very much like the old MZs. And then another bike that's... Uh, Looks very Yawa-ish again. Is this uh, Derby 250 from 1953? I think the comparison is uh, immediately obvious. The nacelle headlamp, etc., and the way the carburetor's uh, covered at the rear of the cylinder, but the head itself is flat. Very unusual. And next to it, 200cc rower. And again, the Villiers engine, looking more like the ones I'm used to. But the case is actually uh, marked Hispano Villiers. It's a Spanish built. And then a couple of scooters. A Lambretta 125 from uh, 1954 with sidecar attached for moving families around and then next to that a corresponding Vespa similar era also 125 so must be been exceptionally slow and then a 125 N Vespa from 1953 a wide frame got the low headlight the Faro Basso on the headlight on the um, mudguard but also a turning one on top as well. And then not to be outdone, Montessa were knocking out scooters, what they called a micro scooter, in 1963. Hasn't quite got the style of the uh, Italian models, but you can see the uh, inspiration. And then we move into the section where there are more off-road orientated stuff, which is what I associate Spanish motorcycles with, uh, particularly in my era. And uh, the first one, an Alpha ALFER motocross, which I've, again, never heard of, with a Hero engine. Heard a Hero, that was, uh, they got associated with trials engines. Um, Sammy Miller, I think, built Hero engine trials bikes. But anyway, an Alpha motocross. And a Bultaco Astro uh, flat tracker, but fitted with cast wheels and disc front and rear. And then above that, the earlier version, which has no front brake at all, which is common in flat tracking in America, and a huge rear disc. It would be the Persang motocross engine that's in there, which is uh, exceptionally powerful. In fact, this has got uh, a Hurst Earhart rear master cylinder and brake, so they're American, I believe. A Jalera 50 Enduro. Um, I was unaware that Jalera built bikes in Spain, but there you go, I learned something new every day. A name uh, that people of my age particularly remember as being a very good sports moped. Oh, how about a Duxong 50cc off road moped? Again, not a make I've ever heard of. The motor is marked up as a Duxong. So, it must be their own, I would imagine. A Derby 75cc crosser. And a push, a push. Also, a proper competition bike, which sits next to a Rehu. Also competition, 75cc, must be a popular size in Spain, there seem to be a few of them. And then above that, a trapador, also 75cc.
And then in the middle, some military and police vehicles. Now this is a Bultaco Frontera, which is their competition enduro model and has a reputation of being rather wild, to be honest. So they must be very skilled Garda Civil to be riding these about on the streets. And then next to that, an army Bultaco, 350 Militar, which is based on the Alpina by the looks of it. Complete with the, well it's not machine gun, um, what would you call it? Can't remember. Anyway, complete with gun. And then an Alpina in Red Cross colors from 1971. And then the military Matador from 1976. Airborne division, according to the uh, side panel, it's got a parachute on it. And then behind that, with the white fairing, a Sanglass 400 single in police trim. That'd make a cracking classic tour, wouldn't it? I, I really would fancy one of those. And then eat your heart out, Yamaha XT lovers, which is, I include myself. Uh, how about a Sanglass 500 TT with the 500 uh, four-stroke huge engine, complete electric start by the looks of it, bunged in an off-road trellis, absolute beast. I've never seen one of these, but there again, that applies to pretty much everything I've seen in this museum. Right, a very nice gentleman just came up to me whilst I was filming the TT 500 Sanglass, which you just looked at and told me that it and this MTV 400, which is based on a Ducati engine, it looks to be like a belt drive, so presumably half of a belt-driven V-twin. These are unique, as is the Bultaco Streaker behind it, that's a prototype. And he told me the museum has 350 motorcycles on display, which we're looking at now, and a further 1100 in storage awaiting restoration etc and also presumably they will uh, rotate the stuff on display so it's, it's even more amazing than i thought it was anyway moving on this bull taco is apparently a one-off as well uh, for a rally i'm not sure exactly what the difference is it does look very similar to uh, lots of bull tacos, to be honest. Looks like the uh, Matador engine. There must be something specific about it that I'm unaware of. And then behind that, a Ducati marked up as a Montjuic, which of course is a name we're more used to associating with Levadas. Which is really quite stylish to the road bike, isn't it? But again, I think it's a a prototype. Lovely bike. So many bikes, so little time. And then some Bultaco TSS races, which were very, very competitive in the 60s. Including a 125 water-cooled version. Little radiator. Looks like it's using straightforward thermal circulation ice straight off the head into the radiator top tank and then as it cools it drops down to be recycled so no water pump as such by the looks of it very nice so 1965 that one water cooled racer let's pan back out if we can And then a Coronat 200 from 1954 with a massive nacelle and a rather unusual engine layout with the carb and the exhaust pointing forward in a very long set of crankcases. Very unusual. And again, a model I've never heard of. And above that, the Colomat 
from 1953. Again, utilitarian two strokes of small capacity appear to be the mainstream of uh, Spanish production, but still all fascinating. A Motor Trans Ducati, 24 Horace, which I remember Bike Magazine in the UK calling the 24 Horrors because of their uh, fragility, but a spectacular looking 250 twin lead shoe, front brake, just beautiful. And in an Ossa Sport, difficult to get all these in. Room is tight. An Ossa 250 Sport, and in an Ossa 160 Turismo above that. And in a Prometa, a 250 for 1953, described as a Turismo. And then an MV Augusta. A 235cc, which um, from memory was a tax break for French market motorcycles. So you could get the Ducati people made 235s as well. And it's complete with all its uh, champion of the world badges on top of the tank. And then next to that, a Mavisa 250 Sport. Again, a very unusual motorcycle with what appears to be in a cell, but then continues down to act as the top suspension mounts for the Earl's Forks. It's also a flat twin, a two stroke looking at it. Sometimes hard to tell, but looks like a two-stroke. Mavisa. Described as a Turismo, but with quite sportive handlebars. A set of ace bars, really. And a big tank. Appears to be shaft drive as well. So 250, two-stroke shaft drive, 1955. And then a Derby 200cc from 1977. Starting to get the angular looks of the uh, time. Twin front discs, which is quite advanced for 77, I would have thought. Two stroke twin. Aggressively thinned, but still a six volt. And a rear disc brake as well. And then a Mark IV Matador that was converted for uh, an event in Africa. So you've got a large, a very large tank, which is basically the original tank with a bit welded on top. But then two five-litre jerry cans strapped on the back, <laughs> along with water and various other stuff. And I would imagine the way the Matador drank fuel, you're going to need every ounce of those uh, additional amounts of petrol. There is a story about it, but again, my Spanish is not able to work out what on earth it says, sadly. And then an Osa Yankee, which is uh, Osa's attempt to produce a really uh, rip-roaring off-roader because they used two of their 250 top ends to make a 500 twin. There was one in the UK, because I remember seeing it on eBay a couple of years ago. Uh, I shudder to think what the fuel consumption must be like in one of these because the uh, off-roaders by Ossa and others were not particularly economical at the best of times. And then something British or semi-British, uh, Rickman Matisse holding a Bultaco engine built between 64 and 67. And another British name, Mick Andrews, who uh, created this trials bike for Ossa. I won't dwell on the trials bikes because uh, big uh, gripper, I think they're called in the UK, the Ossa, I think they're called grippers, uh, because these were all available in the UK and therefore of slightly less interest. 
live in the Pyrenees, don't want to be snowed in, need to get out and get your bread and your sangria. Well, how about a bull taco Sherpa converted into a snowmobile? Next to a Mark 9 Matador, according to the uh, little bit, which was built for a Spanish expedition to the North Pole in 1982. So you've got an extra large headlight, snow tires with studs, an additional battery on the back, presumably because the battery would die so quickly in the cold, and then a trailer hitch to which was attached the trailer, complete with Bultaco skis and lots and lots of fuel and provisions. And then a Vespa PK small frame. And this one was the 500,000th Vespa made in Spain. A PK 75 from 1983. And now some of the slightly more common of the road bikes, ones I at least I recognise slightly. A Bultaco Metrella from uh, 74, I think this one is, Mark II. I love the air scoop on the uh, front brake. And the Montessa equivalent, the Impala Sport. Look at those forks. Clearly competition derived again with the, uh, an air scoop for the front brakes. Very stylish. And then next to that, a Derby Grand Sport, which is much smaller. I'm not sure what engine size we've got here. Let's look, 75cc. And again, still got an air scoop. And some wonderful rear sets. Very sporty. Oh, <coughs> close up of the uh, another Yankee. Three years they were made for, twin cylinder, two stroke, sold for America. This is the road version of the uh, off-road one we saw earlier. Cast wheels, rear disc brake. And a very pokey motor. 58 horsepower. It's hard to describe just how small it is. A pair of large AMALs stuck in there. Very light, very fast. And then an OSO 175 competition. Appears to be a four stroke. I was unaware they did uh, competition four strokes, 1958. An Osa trials bike, a plonker. Unfortunate name. Lots of competition bikes in this section, including a Montessa prototype trials bike with leading link forks. Look at the uh, brake stay bar on it as well, it's massive. Uh, Greaves used uh, leading link forks as dot as well, I think. But I thought they'd pretty much been abandoned by the time uh, this must have been a prototype. But anyway, there you go. And then uh, a Rickman again, but this time with a Montessa engine stuck in here. And then a Sanglass motocrosser from 1960. Not much evidence of weight pairing going on, to be honest. It's uh, a chunky old beast. But I suppose BSA were churning out C15s and things, which would have been similarly chunky. But 
I would imagine, a very rare bike. A Bultaco Montjuic endurance racer, complete with four leading shoe, drum brake, massive size, enormous fuel tank, and a 360, presumably Matador, Persang engine, twin plugged. They were actually uh, very competitive. And in front of that, a water-cooled Bultaco 50 racer, which is basically an aluminium spa with the engine hanging off it, which tucked in under there. And then another couple of racers, an Arisco Moto, which I've never heard of. And then a 250 GP Ossa road racer. This one is a, a replica. Every hand fabricated an alloy tank, etc. Again, massive, uh, massive drum. And then a Cobas from the 1980s up to 1998. Not not a motorcycle manufacturer, a racing manufacturer I'm aware of, to be honest. And then another TSS from 1970 behind. Then Paris Dakar 350 Desert from 1982. Again, I was unaware that Ossa had entered the Paris Dakar. And then a Merlin Nomad, 500 uh, Dakar, uh, ridden by Jordi Archerons, who uh, is a well-known name. And as well as a giant tank at the front, we have an additional one at the back. And then it's more at the side, pannier tanks as well, powered by a Segiva 504 stroke motor, which you can barely see under the tank. And a couple of motocuzzis which were built in uh, Barcelona and Seville. The top one is a 65cc Hispania, I believe. Yeah, it's on a, it's on a tank, 65, yeah. So there you go. Sprung de Forks. And then a Hispania 98 from 1958, it says. Friction damper rear end. Turn the handle for a stronger damping. The Rondine 125 Sport from 1952, which sounds vaguely French. Now this is an Ossa Pluma. Uh, their off-road bike from uh, late 60s, something like that. And I believe it was the Pluma that Mick Andrews used as the basis when he started making the Mick Andrews replica and turning it into a proper off-road trials bike. But I think this is where it started. But I may be wrong. And here we have the original Bull Taco Sherpa from the late 60s. Ah, uh, late 50s, sorry. 59, in fact, the first domestic Sherpa was around, still with big drums, heavy forks, etc, etc. So not yet the Sherpa we were to know and love, but next to it is the Sherpa we know and love, because this is a Sammy Miller Bull Taco Sherpa. It's even got the, uh, the great man's signature on the uh, number plate board, number board. And this is what basically sounded a death knell of all the big four strokes. 
And another rarity, a Montessa outboard motor for a boat. I would absolutely no idea they made outboards, but there you go. And in Agilita Museum, there's this final oddity, a three-wheeler fun car, I suppose you'd call it. Fiberglass body, tiny wheels, hammock type seats, tiller steering wheel, motorcycle headlamp bolted into the uh, bodywork at the front, and hand lever for your gears. Substantially built, engine mounted at the rear, spare wheel, bit of room for luggage. Designed by Mr. Bulto, who went on to, of course, make Bultaco. And this dates to 1953. Right, there's a picture on the wall as you leave, showing the bikes they've got in storage. And the thing that caught my eye is that, which is the Shifty, which I thought was Italian. But anyway, I remember the Shifty when it came out and it had a, or at least was discussed in the motoring press, and it had a Fiat 127 four-cylinder car engine in it. Sadly, it's not on display, but uh, another real rarity.